Welcome, guys. Uh, yeah, so like Mate said, uh, if anybody needs the USB sticks, just raise your hands and Carlos is going to give it to you. Uh, so yeah, the, the idea for this workshop is more like uh, hands-on. Uh, it's not for me to keep talking here. It's just I'll try to show you how uh, we are using the, uh, our technologies uh, to improve the SPA experience and the front-end uh, experience development uh, experience too. So, uh, so if you have, uh, does everybody have Git installed? Yeah. So that's it's not a requirement per se, but it's good if you get if you ever get stuck in one step to move to the next step. Uh, I have prepared some branches already, so you can move from step one to the next step. So it's nice to have Git. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to explain what this, uh, what the goal of this workshop is. Uh, so basically, uh, what we're gonna do is to create a, a soy portlet, which is a new kind of portlet uh, that integrates with with uh, Metal and Senna, and uses soy, of course, as a templating language. Uh, so soy portlets is uh, what we are using to bring all these technologies together and provide a, a better experience. Uh, I'm gonna show you how how much improvement that is in the navigation for the users uh, uh, in some time. So, and we are gonna learn how to use the, the, the soy templates. It's quite easy. The syntax is not difficult, uh, and it's an alternative to using JSPs. So, if you're interested in that. Uh, and finally, just create a simple metal component uh, inside the portlet, so uh, you can see how a metal component works. Uh, it's just a simple example. So to start, uh, before anything, uh, so the first deployment uh, depends on on some npm installs. So uh, to get this out of the way first. I suggest that you navigate to the folder uh, you unzipped uh, from the USB drive. Does everybody unzip that in a folder? Yep. Yeah. So just navigate to the to the folder on the command line uh, and try to uh, run the Gradle wrapper deploy. I'm gonna do it here just so you can see. Is that good enough? Okay, so. So in my case, it only took like 18 seconds because I already have some stuff installed, but it might take a little bit more for you. So if for some reason uh, you get stuck, uh, Carlos can help you if your build is not successful. Did anyone try that before and it didn't work? No? It didn't work for you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, having that, uh, you should have a portlet deployed, uh, so you you can just find it. Oops. So you should have a portlet called DevCon Blocks Portlet uh, on your library instance, right? Yeah, so while that runs for you, uh, let me talk about some of the technologies we're using. So uh, we're using Metal.js uh, as the front-end framework for, for Soy Portlets. It has a nice integration. 
uh, together with the SPA. Uh, I'll show you more later. Uh, but if you went to the talk before uh, that Chema gave, he was talking uh, about uh, Metal.js, why we chose to, to, to do it, to build our own framework, and what's it, what it solves, what the problems it solves, and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and you can also check out the documentation uh, if you have any, any doubts about how that works. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into metal here, just it's one of the technologies we're using. Uh, and metal, uh, it, it accepts right now uh, two template languages, which is JSX and Google Closure. Uh, the idea is that metal is kind of template agnostic. We didn't want to like get stuck into one template language, but we're, we're, we chose Soy uh, for this demonstration and for Soy portraits because uh, Soy, Soy has a nice feature which is it can compile both from JavaScript and Java, so uh, you can do server-side rendering with, with it, so I'll, I'm gonna explain later. And it's uh, quite nice because it, uh, it does what the modern frameworks are doing right now, which is this automatic rendering. So whenever I change some state, it will automatically render the component. So this is uh, a nice feature. And it does that uh, using something. Have you heard of uh, Virtual DOM from React? So we're using Incremental DOM from Google, which is kind of similar. Uh, it's just different. Uh, it's optimized for memory. Uh, it has its it's like it's a balance between perform uh, processing performance and memory performance. So uh, incremental DOM is optimized for a mobile device, for example, because it uses less memory and stuff. Uh, closure templates, which is soy templates, uh, it's the language we we the template language we chose. Uh, it has a lot of uh, nice features uh, like localization. It's uh, security, uh, access has security features, uh, but one of the key features is that it can compile uh, from Java and from JavaScript. So what that means is that we can have uh, a server communicate to the client only data, because we know that both the client and the server can render the template. So we can have a nice uh, hybrid uh, rendering app uh, just using soy uh, and it and the syntax is quite simple uh, as you can see it's it's nice that it is declarative I can I, I have to declare what I'm using inside a template otherwise it will complain about uh, during the compile stage so your templates only has like uh, the minimum it needs to, to render uh, and it's basically mark enhanced markup with for each loops and if st statements. Uh, it's quite simple. And we are using Senna.js uh, for the routing uh, of the SPA. So we use Senna for a while, uh, but the implementation uh, right now on the XP uh, is not like a, what do you call a real SPA. So Right now on the XP, whenever you do a navigation, it requests the whole HTML of the page you are trying to navigate to. So that's not ideal, but it did improve uh, a lot in some cases where every navigation, if you didn't have cache or it was your first navigation, for example, uh, in some cases could like transfer like one megabyte. And we, with the implementation we have right now, we decrease that a lot, uh, but it's still not ideal because we are rendering st uh, stuff that we don't need to render all the time or transfer, right? Some some actions that the user do only changes a portion of the of the screen, and we don't we don't need to download or or do a full round trip for some resources and stuff like that. So, and why don't we just request a JSON? Uh, the reason is the templating language. So by using JSP, it's pretty hard to render stuff from the client. 
So we have to rely always, always on the server to render our views, right? So there's no way I can render JSP from JavaScript. Uh, and because of that, uh, we we are trying to to get this soy portlet as an alternative to JSP portlets because with this soy portlet we can do navigations that transfers like less than one kilobyte. Right. We can just transfer uh, JSON data, necessary data, to render the view, and we get a much faster navigation with that. Uh, so Soy Portlets, uh, it's basically an extension of MVC Portlets. So this is the hierarchy, and it's just enhanced MVC Portlet. Uh, I'm guessing all of you probably have developed an MVC Portlet before. Did anyone? Didn't? Have you developed a uh, MVC portlet before? Yeah, so soy portlet is not different. I'm gonna show you uh, the few differences it, it has from MVC portlets, but it's quite simple. Uh, and we are using uh, MVC render commands to do the routing uh, of the SPM framework, uh, which is Senna. Right, and so basically every view maps to an MVC render command just like it did on JSPs. The only difference being that now it maps to a soy file, a soy view, right? And that's basically it. Uh, I'm gonna walk through what we have on the module you guys downloaded. So you've probably seen that we have a modules folder with a blogs web application, right? Can you see that? So, so uh, the idea is that we build a blog application just for the sake of learning uh, the technologies. Uh, this is a, a soy portlet. Uh, so on the declaration of the portlet, that's not much. Uh, difference from an MVC portlet. Instead of having MVC here, we're just extending from soy portlet. And uh, on the, the full view template, uh, instead of mapping to a JSP file, we're just mapping to a soy namespace, right? So, and on the view side, I have a, a soy portlet, a soy template here, whose namespace is view, right? And by convention, we're using the dot .render uh, template as the go-to templates for, to render a view. So uh, basically, uh, here we're saying that the main view, when the user just gets the, to the portlet, goes to this namespace, and it will render this, right? Uh, this ID parameter is one uh, must have for the metal component, so we have to wrap or portlets around a div with an ID. That's just how it works. And this is how it's it gets rendered, right? So, yeah. And we also have a view uh, .js, right? .es.js, which is using the new syntax, the ECMAScript 6, 6 syntax. Uh, it's basically a metal component, a very simple one. We just extend from metal component. And that's it, we're not doing anything else. But that's, that, that'll that be our controller, our JavaScript controller for that view. So if we, we ever want to add some logic, some behavior to that view, that's where we would do it. And that's basically it, the structure of the soy portlet. Oh yeah, so there's the MVC render command. And it's just, I'm just mapping that to the, the full view, so I want, uh, the default view to fall into this controller, this MVC uh, command, right? And again, it will return, whatever it returns uh, is the uh, soy namespace. So on, uh, when building MVC portlets, we used to return the JSP file. So here it would be something like view.jsp, right? And now we just map to the namespace of the soy portlet, of the Sorry, template, sorry. And we have the template object here uh, in the request. So here is where we uh, have the opportunity to 
to put stuff inside a template. So uh, imagine uh, that I have more parameters here and I can populate these parameters from the backend uh, just by putting in uh, objects inside a template here, right? Any questions so far? So the idea is that we get this. Uh, if you if you saw your your workspace, we are on step one, right? The idea is that we move to st uh, to step two and then to step three and keep progressing our app to show showcase some features and get comfortable with the how sort portals are. Uh, so to get to step two. Uh, I showed some diff here, so we can start by the template. This is our view dot soy that we all have in your workspace. So let's try to list uh, some blocks uh, from the blog service that's already on the, on the XP, right? So basically. Uh, we can just remove the hello world and do some markup. So let's just create a div, right? And do a for each on each block. And we're going to put that inside a, a column. That's just a bootstrap markup. And inside that, I can organize my templates to be like modular. So I can have a card here. Which is just another template inside my my template file. So I'm I'm just calling the block card, which is right here, just so that I can organize. So the the soy templates are just like functions that I can call, uh, and it, that's a nice feature because I can organize my code better, uh, my template code. So okay, let's do it. Uh, yeah, so, and yeah, so here I can, uh, I have to declare uh, the parameters that I'm going to receive. So this is what I'm going to receive from the server, right? So I'm defining here that I want a, a blocks parameter. Uh, and it, this is a, it should be a list of objects and each object should have these fields, right? I want to display the author email, author initials, author name, maybe an image, and a title, right? Uh, so I'm defining the contract of what the view needs to render. And here I'm just looping through all the blocks and calling uh, the template that's responsible for rendering one block entry, right? One block card. Uh, and if it's the list is empty, I'm just showing there's no blocks to display, right? Uh, the block card uh, just has a, an author email and all the information we defined before. Uh, but that's this template is responsible for render just one entry. So that's what we're going to loop over and call, right? So it's just a div. Uh, which is a card, and uh, inside it, I, I'm just showing the initials, uh, the name, and the author email, and the title of the blog. Okay, so. Let's do it. Okay, so first thing is just to declare the parameters, right? So I'm just gonna <coughs> blogs is a list, right, of objects. And I want author email initials name, right? So I'll have author email which is a string, 
author initials, which is also a string. Oops. And author name, which is also a string. Other than that, I might want some image, which could be just the source of the image, and uh, the title of the blog, right? <laughs> so here, we're gonna do a, we're gonna put that some markup, right? And inside here, I'm doing for each. Uh, right. So inside here, I can just have a, a div, which is a column. And I'm gonna call the blog template. You know what? Maybe it's better if you guys can have. Do, do you guys have the the link to this repository? Maybe it's better. Yeah, if you want to see the, the logs, just using git diff or source tree, yeah, or whatever. But if you want to see on the web, just github.com slash brunobasto slash devcon dash soy dash workshop. Yeah, you should see the branches, right? So if you come here. There are a lot of branches. So we are in step one. We want to go to step two, right? And on step two, we have one, one more commit. Right? So let's just start by this soy file. Uh, you could just copy and paste if you prefer. So, like this block card, for example, is not important. Oh, you need the comments. Okay, so I have these templates, block cards that I copied here. Uh, and I'm just gonna call it. So you can call another template from it within a soy template. So you just need to pass the parameters using this param function. Uh, and it needs basically the blog's information, sorry. Alter email. Initials name image title right oops yes yeah, so and there's also this if empty, which is just if ever my list doesn't have any entries, I can just show some alert here, right? Uh, 
my lord, a fool. And the block art templates is just uh, listing, so I can pass some, uh, declare some parameters as optional. So a block might have an image or might not have an image. So I can put a this question mark here, and when I do that, I know that this parameter is not always going to be uh, there. So I'm passing, putting an if statement. Uh, around the image, so if ever image is no or undefined, just don't don't show anything. And to call whatever parameter to display whatever parameter you receive, uh, you just open braces dollar sign in the name of the parameter. All right, the dollar sign should be inside the brackets. And so yeah, right now that's all we're doing. So in the template, template uh, we're just going over the blogs, listening and showing uh, some card. Uh, but where does this blog come from, right? We need to pass it to the view, the blogs, the list of blogs. So if you check the, uh, the diff here, uh, on our MVC command, we're now calling the blogs entry, local service, to query for all blogs that are registered inside the portal. So uh, basically, I'm just adding a reference here to the blogs. So let me. So we want the what you want the block service, right? Let's call it. And uh, I need the list of all the blogs. Right. Okay, so what I want is to loop over each blogs uh, and only get the specific information I want, right? I, I know that the blogs uh, API has a lot of stuff that I don't need in my, inside my templates. So I could just do template dot put blogs inside here. Uh, but that's an overhead that we don't want because uh, whenever uh, it prints on the on the page, uh, it's gonna try to serialize this list into a JSON, right? And it's also gonna pass in all the information to the template engine. Uh, so that's not ideal because we don't want that extra information going over uh, the requests. So. Our, a good practice is just to uh, loop over whatever uh, parameters we want to put it, right? So I can either do like this, or I can just uh, have a list of, uh, let's see, list of objects. Of maps. Uh, 
right? So I can go over. All the log entries and I can create a map of string to object. Right. So inside this, uh, I'm just going to populate the list with the context we need. So I want to put inside the context just the information I want, right? So what we need is the title. Okay, so let's which is a string, and I'll put some something else here. So yeah, in order to get the author email, for example, I need the user service. Right. And I can just get the user from the user ID, right? Okay, now I can get the author. Cool, now I can just put this kind of information inside the Okay, am I missing anything? I guess that's it, right? Okay, so. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so basically, I got all the blogs entries. I created a list of hash map just to put whatever I need from the blogs inside of that list, right? And I'm passing that list of, of maps to the blog service, to the template, sorry. So I just built the context, which is all the template needs, and I'm putting it in there. Right, so let's see if there's something else. And in theory, that's all we need to render the view. So let's try to deploy it, see how that goes. See if it's okay. So this service, the yeah, bundle started, and uh, that's it. Yeah. So I'm listing uh, blog entries from the blog service. Did everybody get to this stage? Yep. Cool. Sorry. 
Okay, so in that case, you just we don't have the feature to add a blog yet, so you can just go to the blogs portlet and try to add one, just so you can see something. You're trying uh, the blade minus W? It should. Uh, it is keeping tasks. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's a bug. Can you try just deploy without the watch flag? It works? OK. I'll take some notes here just so that I don't forget. Oops. Okay, so let's try to go to the next step and add some more features to this app. So in step three, we try to add a link to a new view, which is the view where we can actually add a blog entry, right? So one thing we need to do is just to provide the URL to that view so we can show a link on a template, right? So I can just use the Render response, All right? And I'll set the MVC uh, render. I just I always forget common name. To some value, so let's say add, right? or better edit and I'll put that inside the template context right so uh, let's see add blog URL that should go to this string right cool So now I have a link uh, inside my context and I can show that link uh, in my template, right? So basically, I'm just going to here. I'm just adding a button, uh, which is actually a link and the uh, Reference to the link is what I'm getting from it was what I put in the MVC common name, right? So I can just add another parameter here Right Okay Okay, so when I click here, it's gonna go to that new view, but we don't have a common for that yet right if I deploy this now, it's going to go to a link that that doesn't have an MVC command. So we need to go to the fourth step, which is actually implementing the command name. I hate when that happens. Okay. Okay, let's implement the edit view. It's basically just, let's do an empty. Let's do an empty template. 
and we can do an empty edit dot sci right and let's clear that up okay and what this does is right so here in this view what I need is actually just the right now I just need the save blog URL which is which will be the form right so add blog URL let's actually save right so this form goes to this save blog URL uh, it's important that we put the ink type of the form in the method to post uh, the ink type to uh, multi-part form data because uh, that's a limitation of our SPA engine so it will just route forms submissions for forms that has this data because you were using the HTML5 form data API so in order to support uh, file uploads uh, using SPA, you need that. So I'm just adding that to the form. Right. And it's basically, I just have a title form field here. And uh, so you must have noticed that in Liferay we need the uh, the field names, the input names to start with the Portland namespace, right? So when using the, in JSP, when using the taglibs, the AUI input taglibs already put that for you. Uh, here, we just have to put it manually. And so it has this injected uh, data variable. That's a global uh, variable in SOI. So whenever you want to something that's going to be available everywhere, we put that inside these injected data uh, in soy. So in Liferay, we are putting, uh, for now, just the Portland namespace. That's the only thing we felt that we needed for the, this soy portlet. So, so we create an input uh, with a portal namespace and the name of the input's title, right? And we do the same for the content of the blog. I guess that's it. And we have the save button, right? Let's close it. Yeah, that's that's just a global variable that is always there in soy. Uh, and they they use it for like stuff that you don't want to pass around so imagine you have like nested templates one template calling the other calling the other calling the other and you need some some data inside this deep down component so yeah this injected data is a feature of the site of the closure templates uh, and we uh, are just putting a portal namespace in there because that's something we felt that's going to be used a lot. So far, that's the only thing we're putting. Uh, and uh, we're putting some, uh, like a trim down version of the theme display. Because we, we, we didn't want to put all the theme display in that because of serialization and stuff like that. Yeah, theme display. Can double check. Yeah, so that's just a feature of these templates. Um, yeah, so here we have a form, we have a button that uh, of type submit, right? And that's, okay, so this should be the edit view. 
right? Okay, so we have the JavaScript for the view, the controller, we have the template. We're just missing two things, right? So this is a form submission, so we need a, instead of a render MVC command, an actual MVC command to handle form submissions, right? Uh, and we also need the command to render this view. So let's check what what the next step is. Okay, so here we are implementing the render command of this view and we need to provide this save log URL to it, right? Uh, I can just copy that. And here I'm going to map to just edit, right? And all I need here is the, is the, actually, I need a, I need an action URL. Right. And action URL, URLs, we need to set the action name. Right. And this should be the same. And it should go to the edit namespace. Right, so this MC command goes to this edit view here. So let's check the, fl the flow. So on the view uh, MVC command, we have a link to the add blog URL, right? Which will render this view, which renders this, this template, right? And this template, when we submit uh, the form, it goes to an action command that we don't have yet. Oops. But let's see how that goes. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Oops. Let's check if that's deployed. Okay, so now we have a, this add button here. And if I click here, an error happens. Oops. What did I forget? So here it goes to edit. This is edit, right? Uh, hmm. So it's saying that I don't have the save log URL. Save log URL. Oh, right. Okay, let's try again. Okay. 
okay so when I click here I know I can navigate to the other view and if you notice uh, this is a navigation that's transferring only necessary data right so it's very fast right? and it only renders what it needs uh, if we try to add something here it's not going to work because we don't have the action command yet Sorry? This one. Yeah. What is the transfer? Transfer? Yeah, in the, in the browser. The template has to be something that is rendered. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, Let me go back here. So let me see if I can be here. Um, do you see that? Yeah. So we render the uh, templates on demand. So yeah. when I navigate to this view, I will first try to uh, load the controllers, JavaScript controllers, and that includes the edit.soy, right? So I'm navigating to here, edit.soy, Yes, which imports edit.soy. So this component is what controls this view. Right, so whenever I navigate to a new view, uh, the AMD loader is gonna try to load the controller for that view. So, when you click to, uh, so I'm here, Right, and if, imagine I just loaded the page here, right? So whenever I click to a view, uh, just clean it up. When I click here, it's downloading the soy. It's actually the soy.js, which is the transpiled for for them. Is that working for you? It works. Yeah, using Chrome. Perfect, yeah. It should be on the net network uh, tab. Uh, is everybody able to render these steps so far? <laughs> yeah, so uh, do you have your cache disabled? Yeah, try, so if you're using like in Chrome, you can just disable the cache. Yeah, because this uh, like soy.js uh, will get cached by the browser, right? So you probably have a another older version of the view. So from so when we load the page, it will render from the server, right? And then it will hydrate the view with the JavaScript. So you might see the button coming from the server, and then when the JavaScript takes over it removes the, bot the button because you have an older version of the view, right? So it's always good to keep the cache disabled when, when developing. Okay, so let's try to uh, implement the actual saving of the blog entry right so what step were we five I think it's six right we need to create the action command that will save the blog right so I can just copy from an existing one I'm calling save. Yeah. Action command. And this 
extends from uh, base MVC action command. And it doesn't make sense. Maybe this does. Okay, so do process action. Okay, so this is uh, the controller for when we submit the form, right? And inside here, we are gonna actually save the block entry to the database. So, this is the beautiful API to add a single block entry. So, we first get the title, right? From the request, we get content from the request. I need this utility. Uh, and unfortunately for the blocks API, we need another uh, a lot of parameters that we don't care about right now. So I'll just get the service context user ID. Uh, get this. Right. Okay, so basically uh, what we need from our view is the title and the content and this other stuff is what the blog API needs to uh, to add a blog entry, so we need the user ID and some other stuff. Uh, and I'm also actually sending the re redirect to another view after the submission is done. So um, I'm creating a render URL here. And if the addition goes successfully, I'm redirecting the user to the view MVC render command, which is the first one we created. Uh, if it's some, for some reason it doesn't go well, uh, it will stay on the same view and some session message should show up. Right, so, and this is, I think this is save, right? Yeah, so. This is the save MC command. Okay, so if we deploy that, hmm. oh, yeah, it's implementing the wrong service. Okay, that should work now. Oops. Okay, that should be available now. Okay, so I can go to this view, uh, log, try to add a blog, and when I submit it, it should be here, right? Log one. Okay, so we can now add blogs very quick, very fast. And all these form submissions are going through the same navigations. Uh, 
So this this SPA navigation. So when I submit a blog, it's the same fast navigations with transferring just the necessary data, and it's actually navigating, change the URL, everything. So it's very nice that we can navigate very fast from one view to the other. Did everyone get to this step? Yep. Cool. Uh, so for you, did, we're trying to use the watch, the blade watch, right? Uh, we're sorry. No, I haven't tried it uh, yet. But yeah, so for for this kind of uh, front end uh, development, uh, we're trying to integrate with Blade yet. Uh, so, but we have a uh, another tool. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, which tries to leverage some uh, OSGI features. So we can install a bundle from a folder uh, in OSGI. So when you do that, uh, everything you copy there is already deployed. It doesn't need to wait for the pulling of the jar, unzip the jar, install the bundle. So we have a, this is a beta tool that we're trying to build. So it watches for JavaScript files, CSS, stuff like that. And it installs the bundle in that way from a from an exploded folder. So uh, whenever you change something, uh, it's automatically deployed. Uh, I, I didn't mention that before because uh, it's still in beta. And if everyone tries to install that now, it's probably going to be a very slow on the network. Yeah. Yeah, so all you need to do is you, you install it uh, globally, like that. And if I run uh, LWatch here, it'll try to deploy everything. Let me see if that works. Okay, so let me do some changes here. Uh, I don't know. So it's compiled and it should be here, right? Yeah. So it's very fast. Uh, it detects the, the change and the build took one second, right? Uh, sorry? Yeah, that's because whenever you have uh, uh, this new syntax, you have a package JSON, and you need to transpile files. Uh, our build is trying to do npm install and transpile all the time. Uh, the npm install, even if it doesn't download anything, it's, you have to check some stuff. So it's a bit slower. So that's why we're trying to invest in this kind of tooling. So that's it's much faster. So uh, if I change like a... Uh, I don't know, a JavaScript file here. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it, we're trying to, to get there. Yeah, so... Yeah, getting back to the workshop. So yeah, so we were able to list uh, some blogs, right? And we can add some blogs here. Uh, but now we can, we we might need to I don't know delete some. Let's see what the next step is. So we created the action command. Okay, yeah, you might we might need to edit an entry, right? So 
what we can do is from the view whenever you click on an entry right we can have an URL to edit that entry so we can provide some URL to the in the view right so when going through each entity entry I can create some URLs for each entry. So that's it. Okay, so I'm providing uh in URL for each blog entry and in this URL I'm linking to the edit view but now I'm passing on uh, the entry ID for each blog entry so each it's gonna generate a bunch of links for each entry and uh, oops in the next step I can account for that edit URL in my templates. So now each blog has an edit URL and I'm just passing that down. Right. Oops. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap the some blog information around the link. Okay, right. Uh, let's wrap this to. Oops. Okay, so now the backend is providing me the URL for each blog entry and I'm displaying a link around the name uh, and title of the blog entry. So if I deploy that, Each blog entry should have a link now. Okay. Yep. Yep. But when I click it, it doesn't show the information yet. Right? To do that, we just need to, from the edit view, uh, account for that. Right? So, uh, let me go to Eclipse. Yeah, so here we can now receive some parameter, right? Uh, which is going to be the blog entry URL. Uh, let me. Uh, let me check what's the actual name of the parameter. Blog entry ID, right? So. Okay, so now I can I'm receiving the ID, right? Let me check here. <coughs> this is probably the next step, step nine. Okay, so I got the ID and uh, now I can have, I can be on two modes, right? I can be on adding mode or editing mode. 
that's just some information for our, our template. Okay, so. If I have a blog enter ID, I'm on edit mode. Right? And I can just pass that to the template. Okay, so if I'm on edit mode, I'm gonna uh, pull the information uh, for the blog entry. Right, let's just copy that here. Okay. Um, is that the save one? No. <coughs> okay, so if I'm on edit mode, I'm gonna pu uh, pull the information for that blog entry, set the content on the template and the title on the template, right? And it's gonna go to the edit actual command. If not, this is just gonna go to the save action command. So we have two different action commands, one for editing, and one for adding, right? Uh, add it. Okay, so instead of basically instead of add, I'm going to do update here. And I think all I need is let's check. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Oops. Yeah, let's try to look at that later. Okay, so let's see the template before we know. Let's follow the order in the tutorial. So, in the edit, now I can receive uh, I may receive content and title, right? And if I do receive it, I'll I'll pass it here. So I can do an if. Right. Uh, content. I can actually actually just I can just put it like that. Is it like that? Is this question mark? Quite this is like right, right? Yeah, I can just put the full values for. Yep. Okay, so if I'm on edit mode, right, I can receive content and title. And uh, I might show a different message here. So I can receive some 
flag here. So maybe if I'm on an edit mode, I will show edit. Otherwise, I'll just show add. Right? So, yep. Uh, now we need to actually go back to our actual command and actually say edit the entry. Let's see. So this edit actual command is basically just like the add one, but now it's updating the entry. And I, the only thing that changes is that now we need the log entry ID. Right. Well, I think that comes before the title. Yep. Okay. And now we don't need this try catch, right? Yeah, let's just always go to the <laughs> Okay. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's see if it got deployed. Okay, so when I click on an entry, now I have the information for each blog entry. And I'm not sure if it's saving. Probably missing something. Hmm. The actual command is called save. Uh, it should be edit. Let's see if that gets deployed. Okay, so I can, yep. so I can just change here. Here it is, right? So I can rename it. Oops. Okay, so did I very get to the edit feature? Yep. Okay, so let me remove that from the, it's breaking my layout. Okay. 
So now we might want to delete entries, right? To do the full crud. And uh, let's see how how to get there. I guess the I guess the delete is the next one. Okay, so now we just wanna have a, an URL to delete blog entries, just like we did for editing <laughs> entries. So all we need to do is uh, we need a delete action command, right? It's gonna be very similar to the edit one, just receive the blog ID. We don't actually need the title here. And all we need here is the delete entry, I guess. Uh, delete blog is entry and I can pass it the ID. Right. Cool. And this one is gonna call be called delete. We don't need this. Oops, maybe I need this one, not this one. Okay, so now I have a an action command where I can oh I think I did it on the wrong one. This one is a delete one. Okay. Okay, so now we have a an endpoint to delete blog entries. On the view one, we want to add the delete URL, right? Just like we did for editing. Where's it? Okay, so we want a, a URL to delete entries that we can add to the view. Oops, not here. Just after the edit one. Okay. Just providing the URL so we can delete entries. And it's just a an URL that points to the MVC action command that we just created, right? This one. And what else we need? Now, I guess we just need to. We just need to delete, to show the button to delete, right? So just like we did to the edit, uh, we're just gonna receive the delete URLs. So let's see. Uh, I can have your delete URL. Uh, I'm just gonna pass it down to the card. Right, and here I have the delete URL. Okay, so I'm gonna call this delete button here just after the title, right? Okay, and uh let me grab this delete button.
Yeah, so the delete button templates is just a form, a button that will submit a form to the delete action command, right? It just gets the delete URL as a parameter. And when you click it, it should submit the form. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Right. So now we have this button here. And if I click it, I'm deleting entries. This is actually submitting for a form and redirecting to that page. But it doesn't feel like it. So I can. So this is the same style of navigation. So whenever I delete something, it will navigate to the actual uh, delete command name. Let's see if I can increase that. So it navigated to the delete command name and it got redirected to this view MVC command. And here's the redirection. And here's the context. So this is actually submitting a form, redirecting, and going back to that view. Uh, okay, cool. Sorry? Oh yeah, that's, I, just for demo, uh, demonstrations, I didn't add that step, right? Where would you, would you put that? Yeah, you could, you could, uh, on your view, for example, right? You could have, I'm going to show you some example of, uh, doing, uh, some JavaScript logic, uh, right now. Uh, but you could like prevent the, the click, show a confirmation message in, and then if the user wants to to go, we could go there. So yeah, so this is, uh, so let me just go to this next step. It's actually the t step 12, because I just skipped. So here's an example of uh, some client-side rendering, some logic within the JavaScript uh, controllers. So basically, what it's what it's doing is just adding two uh, display styles. I'm just gonna copy it over so that I can show you uh, the JavaScript log logic, right? So this is the view dot soy, right? And basically it's just receiving now a display style parameter. And based on that, I can have two styles of listing of entries, right? Uh, if it's a list, it just goes to this call, to this large block card. If it's not just the regular one, so aside from that, uh, we just need it. Uh, it's nice to have the default value uh, coming from the server. So just that we we have a nice hybrid rendering from the server and client. So this is the default value because we said that this parameter, I didn't say it, but it might be mandatory, right? Uh, so yeah. 
And to answer your question, uh, let me show you some on click. Okay, so imagine that I have a toolbar now, right? And when I click uh, on an item of this toolbar, I can call a method from my controller. So on here, I have these two methods, show, show cards and show list, right? And it's gonna call, it's gonna come to this, to my controller. Let me just copy it over real quick. Okay, so in my controller, I have these two methods now show cards and show list. And uh, what it does is just change the value of the display style attribute, right? So in my template, I can receive this dis display style parameter. Based on that, the template does some logic. So if display style is list, do that. If not, do that, right? So whenever I change the state, so this is the state that renders the template, right? The state of the component and that's used to render the template. Uh, so this, this display style state attribute can receive one of these two values, right? Cards or list. And, and Metal uh, does this binding for you. So whenever you have this data on click or even just one click, uh, it, it calls the methods of the component from the template, right? So on click show cards is gonna call the show cards method of the component, right? So, and that's gonna change the display style to cards and that's gonna trigger a re-render of the view on the client side and that's gonna update the screen, right? So, let me see if that works. Okay. Okay, so now I have these two icons here and whenever I click it re-renders the view, but that this time it's not an actual navigation, it's not going to an MVC command. It's just client side rendering. Right? It's just going to the JavaScript controller and re-rendering the template because we changed the state. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. That's that uh, .soy.js file, right? So that's what's nice about it because both the client and the server uh, can compile the template. Not, not compile, but can render the template. So it knows exactly what to do with this. All you need to do is change data and the rendering it's handled by metal. Yep. So I guess that covers all these steps that I have planned. So you guys have questions? Yeah. Yeah. You mean uh, create an ADT f uh, with a soy file? Yeah, we have plans to, to create ADTs to, uh, to increase the support for site templates, uh, like ADTs or uh, themes, 
right? Uh, but it, we don't have it that, that yet. And what I said about free marketer, uh, you can call services and stuff like that. So that's not what Soy tries to solve. Uh, yeah, it, it just tries to, to take care of the V on the MVC. It's just view. You shouldn't be calling Java service or adding stuff to the database from the template. So, uh, for in the Soy perspective, you know, so it tries to just limit you to print markup. That's all. Yeah, it's kind of lighter, and yeah. We do catch the compilation of this soy, right? So uh, there's some uh, overhead uh, to compile soy first time, but we do cache it. And after that, it's just, it's pretty fast. We did some uh, some performance testing uh, against like a soy portlet against a JSP portlet. Uh, and we're pretty much even. So, and JSP is just basically pure Java, right? So, Free marker, for example, is a lot slower than pure JSPs, just because it's it has some steps uh, more than just printing to the output stream. Uh, uh, but so I, the performance of server side rendering of so is pretty fast, and client side rendering is even faster because with Ingram Metal DOM we just render what's necessary. Uh, so imagine you just change like one label. We don't repaint the whole template. We just incremental don't knows how to just change what's necessary. So it's very comfortable. Oh, you mean cache the whole? Hmm. You could cache it, yeah. I mean uh, the services. Uh, from portal, from the layers of service from portal are already cached, right? So the, the I'm, I'm not a, a backend developer, but I know there are some layers of cache and uh, trying to improve this. Yeah. There's some module how to uh, for routing uh, between the views uh, for for site templates probably how to like yeah a, a more complex scenario to route yeah we have now two two views here but we can have I don't know ten views yeah so views but the, the routing is just uh, following what we had before that worked before like MVC portlets. Uh, so every route just follows this whatever is in the MVC command name. So and it scopes per portlet, right? So you can even create a friendly URL. I didn't add it here because I didn't think you uh, would have time. So, but basically, so these URLs uh, we have the command name, right? It's added, so whenever that goes to the server, it's gonna try to find the controller that's uh, registered on this on this service, right? So this is view we have added. Yeah, okay. So we, we just need to MVC routing, like uh, yeah, it's just the native routing. MVC routing. The only difference is the rendering part. So this whatever I return here is the soy template, right? And the template itself is not JSPs. Everything else is just basically MVC portlet. And in the routing, the SPA routing, we do it like for you. So under the hood, we are mapping MVC commands to metal components. So whenever you navigate, we render that metal components. We have we do have a naming convention right now. So if you're returning view, for example, from this, we assume that your JavaScript controller is view.js or view.soy. Right? And that's uh, um Frontend part in the JS uh, uh, controller, how you load, for example, international internationalized strings and so on. Is there some? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from the soy, uh, we did that at support for localizing uh, messages. So, for example, if I wanted to show something localized here, I could just 
uh, I could just show it like that. Uh, so this is we integrated this. This is uh, Google's the full way, the, the closure template way of showing internationalized messages. And it takes automatically from the bundle. And it, it, this content. will take from the bundle and from the global uh, language files. And it's just leveraging the, the regular portal localization file. It's going to read the lo uh, language dot properties. OK, nice, thanks. Yeah. You can even uh, put a variable here, like, you know, when you have like those messages with variables. So. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hello. Uh, uh, Still about the uh, the language property file. Uh, you said something about the global language property file. Mm -hmm. So what about the property files that is inside the portlet? Yeah. So basically, when you are translating. Uh, the language API, you can pass it a resource bundle and the language key you're trying to translate, right? So this resource bundle, it could be just your bundle, yeah. your portlet bundle, and that's going to take only the language keys inside your inside your portlet. But you, you can also create an aggregate bundle. So you can create an aggregate bundle of the portal bundle <laughs> And the your portlet bundle. So if you do that, you're gonna have all the keys from your portlet and all the keys that the portal itself has it translated already. So it's just you can create just a, an aggregate of bundles to have more language keys. Uh, for, uh, only for the portlet, or, or or it will be also available to all the other portlets, or do we, or, or it might modify maybe uh, some existing yeah. keys. It, it, this is from the language API. So uh, whenever you call language, uh, language get. Let me. Uh, I think it's language YouTube. Yeah. So I, can, okay. Yeah. I asked the question because uh, in Lefre six docs two, uh -huh. when in JavaScript we called uh, we we call the API language dot language util dot get. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are some issues. Uh, to get the right translation if the translation is not done in the global language pro pro uh, mm -hmm. file. I see. So I was wondering if uh, if you do that in SOI, yeah. you will get the global one or the one mm -hmm. we define in the portlet. Yeah, in SOI, we'll get the, uh, we'll create the resource bundle from uh, the bundle where the SOI file is plus the portal one. Right, so Whenever you do like this message thing, it, it creates an aggregate bundle from the bundle of this soy file where it's located. In this case, BoxWeb. It will, it will put this this bundle plus the portal bundle in the language uh, resource bundle. If you call it from Java, uh, you just have to pass the bundle yourself, right? Okay. And from JavaScript, whenever you do library dot language dot get. A uh, filter automatically does that for you too. But a similar question: uh, the how do you deal with localized model fields? Like if the blog title was translated. Sorry. Like let's say the in, in what if, if what if you have a model field that's localized? Like in this case, we have blogs. If the blog title was in different languages, is that also something you would handle in the soy template or in the? No, I guess it, it, it'll be on your command. So okay. the soy is just going to show whatever you pass it. Okay. Right? So in the Java controller, in the MVC command, you can just pass the localized. More questions? Yeah. Yeah. 
on the client side, yeah. Uh, under the hood, uh, all we do is call the library.language.get. So whenever this message uh, like calls appear on. Mm. The, no, it, it comes from, from the uh, from the server. So the language, whenever you have a language dot lifer dot language dot get, before it gets served to the browser, it passes through a Tomcat filter from the filter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Maybe. Because it's, uh, right now we have uh, only a few examples of like this kind of client-side rendering. The rest is still on JSP, so that's hard to do it. But if we move on that direction, even if it's SOI or another template language that we can render on the client, it, that, that's achievable. <laughs> Hopefully. If it shouldn't be any problem with uh, pretty URLs, right? With uh, um, friendly URLs, uh, it should be the same. It's just uh, using the yeah, just using parameters. That, yeah, that that XML and there's a special case when you need like variables inside the mappings, but I, I hopefully I'll provide the documentation soon enough, okay. uh, but it's, it's not hard to do it.